Talk about how Stafford threw two picks. Was it the defense? Was it a good defense? Was it a change by the coordinators? Or was it just luck? You know what I'm saying? We're going to cover all that in this video. We're going to breeze through the defense, watch every play from last week's game, and get a real feel for what happened in this game. Was it the coverage? Do we need to play more press coverage? There's a lot of people who have great opinions on this stuff, but let's watch the All-22 and let's really find out. Okay, so we have a full defensive game film here. We're going to let this thing roll. And um, really only going to come back at the end and kind of talk about some techniques I wanted to talk about. Um, people don't really talk about defensive back techniques too often on YouTube, so I want to be one of the first ones to do that. Um, you know, just coming from my background, again, coaching DBs, college, and in the NFL, I think there's a lot of little things that people don't understand why guys are getting beat. I always want to break down, is it a technical thing? Is it a mental error? Um, it's just coaching scheme problems, but let's take a look at this film. If you guys didn't get a chance to really watch the defense of the 49ers, you know, you want to know what they do, have a good feel for it. Um, they're going to be playing tonight against the Giants. It should be interesting. The game plan probably won't change much. When you get a Thursday night game, it's pretty much going to be the same game plan from the week before with some tweaks that maybe they have to worry about. Um, but a lot of cover four, a lot of cover four. Defense is going to show up here. I'll put the overlays on there so you can see what defense they were in. And then how many times they played press. So true press is when you get hands on guys, right? But you can also play press and actually, you know, be in that position and you can do what they call a soft shoe. You can kind of basically bail. You can do different things. But the one thing is look at the formation variation here in the first half. I'll let you know when each series changes over. You know the formation variation that you see is a lot of bunch, a lot of bunch and stacks from the Rams in the first half. Um, this is the very first one, but you're going to see a bunch of them come up here soon. So understand that when that happens, you know you cannot, from a from a defensive point of view, you cannot really, uh, you can't press bunches and stacks, especially the outside guy. Like right here, this little tight motion that went out. If you go back and rewind it, it, it was bunch to start. They're playing man to man, and then they motion the guy out quickly, and that's going to make the corner back up. So the little things that you can do to, um, you really can't do much about that. The only thing you can do is probably play cover two, all right? But if you're playing man to man or quarters or cover three, you're probably going to have to get back and give yourself some room so you can play your zone coverage correctly, right? But there are times that we're playing cover three here on defense, and you can see that maybe the flat defenders aren't doing their job. Curl flat defenders and some examples coming up later are not doing their job. Okay, so kind of talk about those things as we go through this. It's not always just about the corners. Corners are on an island in the NFL, and they always get blamed for everything uh, because they're the last people. They're the last ones that people see, right? So we got to start looking at the overall coverage now. Again, in most of my uh, most of these films I do going forward, I'm going to stop it and pause it, and uh, you know, draw some stuff up for you if I see something. But for this film, I just want to be able to get to the plays. I want you guys to see the series and get a feel for what the Niners defense is doing. And then uh, we can go back at the very end and talk about a couple of little things that I think they need to improve on. And speaking from experience, a coordinator on defense is really almost no different than a coordinator on offense. Okay, They are going to build up their package as the season goes. Okay, so. Wilkes is new. He has probably some things that he wants to do, but he's not going to necessarily maybe do them all in the first couple of weeks. He's going to let his guys gain some confidence, you know, not give them too much. So I'm talking about a lot of the man situations. There's going to be some, they're going to need to work on some combos and some tangos and different ways to play man to man. And that's going to probably grow as the season goes. So what you see right now in the early part of the season doesn't mean it's going to be like that the whole year. Cover two, I would say, is probably his. Second favorite coverage after quarters. Um, and then maybe cover one would be right there at time with cover two. So you're going to see a lot of cover two. 
The one thing I have to really question is when is he doing cover? When is he calling cover two? You know, um, is he calling it on third down? Is he calling it on first down? Me, cover two is a good third down call. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily a good call that you want to call on first and second down. Right? But as we went along in this game, uh, you're going to see a mix of coverages. You're going to actually see a lot more press coverage than a lot of people. A lot of the people who uh, reported on the game said that there wasn't that much press going on. But here's an example right here. We're still in the first series. Here goes press cover one against three by one. But again, it's wide spacing. So because the spacing is wide and they're not in bunches and stacks, the corners can play press. And somebody like Ward, number seven, um, he wants to play press most of the time, but sometimes he can't because of the formation. So people need to understand that that's part of the reason why, okay? So that was the end of the first series. Let's go to the second series. Okay, here we're here in the second series. They're going to end up getting um, field goal on this. No, actually a touchdown on this drive. They had a field goal on the last drive. But look at that last play. Go back and watch it. You'll see that we are in man-to-man -man press with the corners, okay? And that's part of the reason why this ball gets knocked out because obviously we're closer to the corner, also because the ball was thrown behind them as well, right? But again, we're here. We're showing man press. Sometimes we show man press. And we actually play cover two. A ward on that play slips. So that's the reason why that's a completion. But that could be an example there when we go back and watch more later that actual corner should not be pressing against that type of formation. Um, and I'll explain more later as we go. Here we go. We got Ward, obviously, in press position at the bottom. Doesn't mean he's going to stay there. Sometimes he would bail. Okay, but here. Here goes a good example of him playing press in the second series, and he gets picked off by his own man because he's playing press. So here's an example, again, of you don't want to play press to this formation. You don't want to play press to people that are going to be running shallows. And then lastly, your coordinator and your defensive plan needs to have a plan for this. You're going to get a lot of shallow ones. It goes a two by two formation that's pretty spread out. Looks like they're playing soft cover three. So, what's going to end up happening throughout this game is cover three, when they play spot drop cover three, which a lot of people don't play anymore, you're going to notice 54, 57, their eyes are on the QB, right? They're pretty much floating. They're getting to their spots, but they're kind of anticipating the routes, right, as they're coming. Um, that's going to open up holes in the NFL. That's why a lot of people don't play that coverage anymore because quarterback with a good arm can just throw curls, check downs, things like that all day versus spot drop cover three. Here goes cover two, okay? So here goes the, the great villain, Nunca, who caught the ball here. It looks like he's wide open, but it's actually cover two. Watch how the middle linebacker falls out. He's the middle, read, middle runner, right? He's kind of back there, wide open middle hole. Right, that's going to be uh, uh, something that the the uh, the slot players, the nickel, and the two vert player linebacker has to cover that route. We can talk more about that later. Here goes another tight formation, classic, classic tight formations from both the uh, Niners and the Rams on offense, which is going to create issues with coverage, and you can't really press this. Thing. The best thing to do, honestly do is to play zone coverage and allow your safeties to get up there and be able to stop the run. Right, and you just basically try to play zone coverage behind it, but you're going to give them intermediate plays. Here goes another compression type of look with motion. Right, it's going to be a run play. We're not going to talk about run right now uh, too much, unless there's something that needs to be talked about. We're going to focus on the coverage in this video, but of course, DB play involves run game too. It's not just the pass game. You know, the pass game is where we make our money. And one good thing about the Niners is they will run and hit. We know that. So this is a long series here, but it's not the longest. They have another one that's going to be even longer coming up here pretty soon. Eight play series. Here's the touchdown play off of a screen. Good play call. Good design. The Niners were in cover seven coverage, which is a coverage that you play in the red zone, really, primarily. And basically, you get double teams. Look like they were playing triangle to the right. We can talk more about triangle later on. So that's the end of that series, okay? So that's series two. We'll come back to series three here in a second. Okay, we got series three. This one is going to be 
13 play series ends in a touchdown as well. All right. So it's going to be a long, long drive here. Some runs, some passes. But again, we want to try to take account on what's going on with the coverage, see what we're playing behind it. So we can get an idea of what the Niners are really doing. Who are they on defense, right? Because I feel like that's going to be a huge story of what happens this season. Or just coverage, okay? And we're playing off coverage. So guys who understand this stuff, guys who watch my Madden channel, you got a mod corner. So anytime one runs a little slant or an in route, hey, he's going to let that go. He's not responsible for the short game. So that's not on the corner. He's just there to make a tackle. That's more of a scheme thing. One thing I noticed about Wilkes is when he gets beat with something, he usually reacts to it the next play. He plays cover one press. Okay, this is the third series. I've seen a bunch of press already. Yeah, cover one press in the third series because they just got beat on a quick slant the last play, probably. Okay, that's a five man rush with a linebacker blitz. Pressure gets in, ball can't get out. So, this is a little bit of a preview of what, you know, the Niners are probably going to end up doing in the second half. Here we go with a bunch formation with a motion out to create a dagger. Nope, not a dagger. Just a little sit-down route. Curl with a wheel. Again, that right there is a play that beats zone and or match coverages, okay? It's something that's going to be really tough for the defense to cover. 54 is the only guy that can cover this. You go back and watch that play, the linebacker, that's his play. He's a curl to flat. He's a hook to curl player. He never got to the curl. Over here, we're going to get cover three. It looks like the shell is pretty simple. Get a rotation with the safety in the corner versus the jet motion. Pretty much just a little a universal thing that people will do is take the free safety out the middle of the field if you're in single high and let the corner go back and become the new free safety. You don't lose numbers. There is a penalty on that play. Again, you can see the formations right? we're seeing from the Rams, right? A lot of tight, compressed formations run and pass this is a play right here this is a really good play it looks better from the end zone niners are actually showing cover three but they play cover two and the soft squat corner actually gets caught on his guy a little bit too long tries to turn back out of it make a play Stafford squeezed in a deep outbreaking route good catch by Atwell. three by one this is how fast the game can feel sometimes when you're in the coach's box. It's good, good feel for how fast the game goes. And then you got to write down the routes too, which is a challenge. But, you know, do it long enough and you get experience. Anybody can do it. Another boot concept here. Good, good tip by Jackson. Jackson is kind of an awkward looking player, but he plays hard. All right, here we go. With looks like quarters coverage. You can look at the shell, but a lot of times the Niners are going to disguise a little bit. Again, tight formation. Best to probably play off. Okay, got to react the right way. Okay, this is straight quarters. And then I actually looked at this one earlier. We'll come back to this one at the end of the film if you want the extra, extra DB school tutelage. But you're going to see 29 with a little hand movement here. He's going to give a little cut symbol, meaning that he's going to cut any in breaking route of the X. They're playing quarters coverage. What beats quarters coverage sometimes is just running a curl right between the two quarters players. And that's actually just a scheme thing. Now, the only thing you could do with that is press. You could play press quarters, but it doesn't look like that's what the Niners do. Another quarters formation against a tight formation here, against a tight offensive set. Always a big bugaboo in the run game. Safeties can't come down to, to play the run because of the tight formations. You got cracking receivers. You got a whole lot of mess in there. Real tough to play quarters coverage versus the run out of the tight compression sets. Another motion to a kind of a bunch formation. We get the run. See the Niners are also giving them a little bit more man down here in the red zone. Struggling with the run game. Don't have a three technique on the left-hand side of the screen. They also freaking uh, loop the freaking guard or the center. Got what they call that. It's not a loop, but you know what I mean. He basically pulled. Over here with a little jet motion, fake jet, toss, little alley right there. I'm really curious to see if the Niners are going to play their rookie safety on the one from Penn State over 31. 31 is good at certain things. I just, he just doesn't, you know, I think he's probably a good communicator. He's good at making plays on the ball, but hes I don't think he's it. A little bit of a run here, good run defense. I'm not going to focus on the run game right now. But you can just see overall in this third and long drive, the Niners are kind of slowly getting 
you know, it's a good it's it's a good game plan by McVay. They're running plays that work, short passes, getting it out, getting getting out the quarterback's hands. Not a whole bunch of big plays besides that one big throw by Stafford. Here, this could be quarters again against a tight formation, like I had just said. Not the best defense versus tight formations. There's too many gaps inside, too many gaps to create with the receivers becoming blockers quickly. You also have a nickel on the field who got completely reached by number 12, by Jefferson. Um, the nickel, number, number 26 in that play, he's not it. Go to the next series. Okay, so that was the first half now, right? So now we're into the second half, and we're looking at what are the adjustments coming out of halftime, right? Let's see if there's any. Seven-play series are going to end up punting. Looks like a little bit of a, I'm not sure what coverage that was, to be honest with you, but it definitely was a zone coverage. Our nickel, number 26, Oliver, got out there pretty late. Looks like cover three from this point of view. Yeah, definitely it's cover three. You see the zone drop, quick out. I mean, that's the hole in the defense. There's nothing wrong from an offensive, defensive point of view there. That's just the hole in the defense. Next play, we're going to do a little press, cover one, rotation with the safety coming down because of the jet motion. But you can see, again, when we get beat on quick game stuff, I can see the reaction is going to be what? Play cover one press. You know who's also looking at that? The New York Giants right now. A little bit of a tendency. Could be a coordinator to play call tendency. Here we go with uh, tight formation up top, Z close, normal at the bottom. Let's spread everybody out, a little bit of an RPO game. Now, as we go along, watch the Rams in the second half. It almost seems like they went away from what was working, which was those tight formations, um, you know, run and pass. It looks like they went a little bit more spread, and I'm not sure what the setup was. You know, these, these, these offenses are famous for trying to set people up for deep shots later. Here goes a bunch like formation, but oh, we're going to motion to two by two. We get cover three zone blitz, it looks like, or some sort of cover one, potentially. Lenore outside, again, it's hard to play man-to-man -man coverage when, you have, when guys are tight. So obviously, we're going to get this motion. It's going to make him move out. He has to play off. You have to be able to play off coverage in the NFL. You do. All right, the only other thing you could do is play a lot of split safety coverages where you play cover six, cover nine. Guys can work together, have help. It goes a quarters coverage again against a tight formation, just a quick little throw. Now, can an offense live on this? I mean, it depends on your offensive style. You know, the Patriots live on short passes. They want to control the ball through the air, right? They want to control the ball, period. They have a good running game, they will run the ball. If they have a good passing game, they will pass the ball. But some people are impatient, you know? I don't know if McVay is that patient to sit there and throw short game all day. If he pretty much had that in the first half, and then this half, it kind of got away from him a little bit. Right? This, this drive is going pretty long. Some good creativity with some little trickery, different ways to get to boot. I just don't see the Rams being a great boot team. I don't know. They have a lot of young receivers that need work. Not quite sure that that's going to be their thing. Here goes two by two with that short motion. This is, you know, I got to go back on that one and watch it again because it looks like the Niners were in zone, which is, again, what you want to do. I just saw Sean McVay talking trash to Greenlaw right there. Let's see if we get it from the end zone angle. Sometimes little things like that are fun to watch, right? Watch 57 go out of bounds. Yeah, they talking. I don't know if he's talking trash to his own player or talking it to McVay, pretending. But anyway, they try to get him to jump on fourth down. They don't get it. Good series, good rallying. A lot of actually zone defense in that series. Not so much press man. That's the first series coming out of the health. That's the adjustment, quote unquote, series. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so we got the second series of the half and the second half of the boot play here to start. Four or five yard gain, not much you can do versus that. This is the series where, I, if I'm not mistaken, there's an interception on the, on the drop pass. So this series is going to end prematurely, but there's about six plays that's going to happen before that. Okay, so they're still in the tight formation here, working it out, run play off of it. Oh, not me with the play action. Another play action here. I am really am shocked at how much play action the Rams are going back to. You know, I know last year, the year before, they were, they were a little more drop back. 
And I guess they feel like they need to to get guys open. The receiving talent is, you know, young. Missed tackle there with the blitz. Kind of get him down there. We'll talk about that another day. Blitz angles, how to blitz off the edge the correct way, where to aim, things like that. Can't really make your money working outside against the Niners, especially on the toss type of plays. Is this a true toss or is this a zone toss? That's yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of a true toss, I guess. Now the Rams are mixing in some of the Patriots schemes with the two coaches they brought over. You're going to see a little bit more two by two combination routes. The right there, that's a good example of again a stack formation. Got to play off. Going to need underneath help if it's not if it's not man to man. So let's see what we got here. This is zone or man. Actually, looks like a little bit of a match zone. Looks like that was quarters again. So, you know, what do you do versus stacks? Well, you just got to have different ways of playing it, and a lot of it's going to be from off, all right? Big motion coming across, that they were playing quarters. This is an example where the safety, 31, I remember this play, he was clapping to his, uh, his corner, basically telling him lock. Okay, so he told him lock his guy. And they were playing quarters. He was just basically letting him know he has no help. But... The, Play was happening so fast that he forgot to read, you know, he forgot to look in the backfield and he ran a ball right at him. He wasn't paying attention because he was too busy communicating. Against run, you can't really sometimes tell if it's cover one or cover three, but it doesn't matter. That's a single high safety look, post safety look. It ran it up into this little small little gap here in that C gap right here with the insertion. I'll tell you what, the Rams offensive line is a little bit better than I think advertised. I think they're pretty good. Um, they're not the best, but they, you know people think they're trash. And I don't think that's the case either. Cover two, easy to see. I check it down, right? That's what cover two usually gets you. Getting the ball over the middle of the field, usually within five yards. Especially if you have a guy like 54 in the middle who can run the middle. You're a Tampa runner and be athletic. The guys that are going to need to make these plays are going to be your nickel and your weak side linebacker, a.k.a. Derrick Brooks, right, from the old-school Tampa 2 teams. Makes a lot of plays in that scheme. This is cover four, a soft four. This is also, what, third and long. This is the interception. So this is an example where Steve Wilkes' scheme of playing quarters, but yet we're going to play it more with eyes on the quarterback, especially on third and long, can lead to little things like this, right? Because if you're playing man, maybe that's not an interception. So... That's the end of that series. Let's keep it moving on the next one. Okay, it's the third series of the second half. This is going to be a quick one, three and out. Unbelievably deep route. You want to talk about a professional attempt at a route. I'm pretty sure that was an out route on about 30, 35 yards, maybe 40. Unbelievable. You get the protection, which again, I'm surprised they even thought they can hold up that long. Great catch. He was just slightly out of bounds. But again, that's just the F you play that I'm going to go and just, I don't care if you're playing press, man, whatever. I can beat you deep down the field on that type of route. Again, another motion to a stack. It's going to back the corner off. You're going to have to play off man. So talking about what do the Niners need? Well, they need guys that can play some off man. They need some guys that can pedal. They need some guys who know how to break downhill from depth. Because teams in today's era of football are not going to just line up and spread formations and allow you to press all day. A little disguise here, actually cover one. And that's a big thing that kind of has been the carryover, I think, with the 49ers over the years is their blitz package with linebackers on third down, cover one. Obviously, they got them on this one. So we'll go back and watch that play later, but we'll go to the next series as we keep it rolling. Okay, so this is a 14-play series that ends up only in a, in a field goal. They work it down here. That was actually a zone blitz. That was cover three zone blitz. Um, that's a tough play. You know, that's where your inside, your seam flat player usually is outside leverage. Unless you're in college, you play inside leverage, but he was outside leverage. He got basically the ball off to the hot player. Good job by them. Offense. Now they're going to work a little protection. I'm going to put the backup in there because of the double mug look. But again, we're dropping to cover three to protect the, uh, the, the skies kind of got, you know, kind of made it so that Greenlaw could not get back out over here and cover his guy in time. 
Again, that's going to be zone defense against the linebacker. Here we go with two by two. Out of a tight formation, so you got to play off on one of those guys. They tried to speed out again at the bottom of the screen. The one thing you'll see a little bit different and what's happening is there's not that we're pressing a lot. So this, that's not the change that, you know, from what I heard on TV, but it's these five-man rushes. I mean, look at the pass rush. You could just see it's like the Niners turned up the heat. Like they were saving it for this moment. There's a lot more pressure. Stafford's just off his platform a little bit. And the, they're doing a good, they as in the Rams are still running stacks and bunches. This one here, we can come back to later. This is going to be top hat, which I'll talk to you what that means. But um, the corners are playing man, but they switch. But again, Lenore is on that guy. And I don't know if it's necessarily anything that he's doing because he's playing from off. It is that he knows the routes. He's been running digs a lot. He knows it. This might be the top hat play. I might have to go back on that one. This is just a two-man beater. They, so they know they're in man-to-man -man coverage in this situation. Again, with these looks at the front, it kind of tells you everything. You know it's a five-man rush. And this is something that, again, I can talk about this later. It's a tango or combo beater with the way they run this. Basically, two guys working in off of a switch release, which, which may mess up your tangos and your combos. Here goes cover four. Uh, it looks like, you know, somebody, again, is thinking big. Um, Look at the safety here, 31. You could probably see it from this angle. They're playing quarters. And, oh, I think I saw it. Yeah. He's give, he gave his outside guy a lock symbol, basically putting him in med coverage on the outside. He was playing all of two, but two ran a dig, so that should be his guy. Another pressure look here. I'm not quite sure what the coverage was. I just know that I'm pretty sure that number seven was in press. Again, let me go back and look at this one, actually. I didn't want to go back, but I am going to go back here real quick. This is important in the narrative that I heard from a lot of the reporters. Again, we're playing press at the top, right? Look at this. But again, he's working across the field. He gets picked off by his own guy. Now, I don't understand what they're telling 54 to do. I think I do know. It's just behind the quarterback. Just keep your eyes on him. Watch him. Basically, almost like a spy in the middle hole, right? But unfortunately, people are running. <laughs> you got DBs who need help. Now, every time I talk to DBs, I say, it's your job to get through. You got to work over that trash, okay? You might have to tailpipe him. I'll talk about that another day. There's different techniques to help you, but uh, they're not getting help scheme-wise from one of the best linebackers in the game on some of the easiest routes. I'm sure he's sitting in the film room, or he's sat in the film room and said, yo, can I help out with that? Can I knock that guy in his ass, you know? Uh, you could do little things like that under five yards, just so you know. And I missed that one. That looked like a soft zone, probably cover two, because the corner was down there low. Two by two, tight formation. Just a little quick little stick over there. Quick little out. So against the Niners, man, like you know, unless they're playing cover two, you have the out ball. You have the five yard out. You have the five yard slants. If you just put it, put them in the right formation, you can pretty much guarantee it. The only thing I can think out of the 49ers package that they have right now is playing more cover three and actually playing. I think they're actually going to play it here. Oh, they did it. They disguised. Ah, times the disguise to get a beat. That looked like it was going to be quarters coverage or he got back at the last second. 31 shows down, but he's going to walk. He's going to walk back. 26 needs to be a much better player. I mean, he looks so passive in there at nickel. I think they're trying to find a home for him, but I'm not sure where he fits. The left bench might be his spot. Here we go with three. This easy spot drop three. Again, the coverage isn't great. The reason why the ball's not getting to the people is what? Talking about pass rush. And these boys are humming. These boys are switching up, coming in and out. I mean, I'll say that wasn't even a great pass rush, but <laughs> Stafford was backing up with his feet. He had happy feet, man. Happy feet. Not sure what happened there. I might have been a penalty. I'm not sure if there was a penalty there. But it looks like we got cover one. We got press here where we can. Guy that got open was the guy that they couldn't get pressed, the running back, obviously. Cover one press. So, again, the overall stats for this thing, again, just because we got the game tonight, I may not be able to go back and put all the overlays on this thing. But the stats look like it's about the same amount of press in the first half that I saw in the second half dictated by the formation that the offense is giving, right? 
Can't really do it if the formation is different. I'm sure this is cover two. Cover two, again, throws it in the middle of the field, the sit down route right in front of your uh, Tampa runner in the middle, the mid read runner. All right. So TP right in the middle, ball gets knocked out. I'm pretty sure that's going to lead to the field goal. Okay. So that's the end of that drive. Let's go through with one more drive here. All right. So this is the last drive we'll watch in this film. This is the one that's a quick one, three play interception. First play is a run. Just so, because I'll let you know, the last two series are going to be um, four and out, and then the long series where they end up kicking a field goal. We don't need to watch that. It's a combination of the coverages we've been watching. Nothing new. Cover two on this play. Ball got knocked down. Again, look at the front, right? Look at the aggressive front. Look how fast they're getting to the quarterback. That's the difference right there. All right, here we go with rest at the bottom of the screen. This is going to be the interception. I mean, Lenore has been on this play so many times. I don't understand why they kept running the backside dig. On top of it, if you watch the TV version, definitely the wide receiver does not stay friendly, which means come back to the ball. He floats up the field. Stafford, you know, looks to his left, comes back to his right. Our right, that was a pick. Now, Lenore probably could have picked off two more before this on the exact same route. So that's where we're at with this. I think overall, guys, I mean, the Niners defense, as you see, they play a mix of coverages. Their cover four, I think, is really not their best coverage, but they still they do run it enough, and it's their primary coverage. Are they going to make changes to it and play more aggressive with it at times? I think they need to. They start off playing passive, and I think that's probably because of Wilkes and also because of his corner situation. He doesn't really have a shutdown corner, per se. Uh, Lenore has the potential to be one. Ward can make plays when he's hot, but he's a streaky player, and we'll go from there. But overall, you can see that in this game, the idea to press was actually part of the plan from the very beginning. Uh, it was just the execution was better in the second half with the D-line pass rush. And the Rams got predictable with their routes, all right? Eventually, all those digs, you know, caught up with them. I can't believe they never took a dig and go. They never took a shot on them at least once. You know, I don't care if they're playing 80 yards off. You got to show that you want to throw deep at some point, at least by the third quarter. You know what I mean? Anyway, I want to talk about this, man. We'll talk about more at the end of this video. I'll come back and do a little separate segment for guys who want to learn about some of the techniques I was talking about. Uh, things that happen in this game. And then we're going to quickly get into the Giants, hopefully, in another video here. It's going to sit back with y'all. Watch what they did in the last game in the second half. Watch the first, maybe watch the whole game real quick like we did this. And feel what's going on with the Giants before they play tonight. So we can kind of maybe predict what might happen. All right. Talk to you later, man. Peace. Hey, what's up? Thanks for sticking around to the very end or fast forwarding to this part. We're going to talk about. The DB rule, I'm going to open this up in the Patreon. I want to have a place for guys to talk real football, not just Madden football. And especially if you're a defensive back, maybe at the lower levels, you're working your way up, high school, college, whatever it might be. Um, we're going to talk about professional techniques that you can learn and things that might be able to help your game a little bit. You need some like instructional footage or whatever, like drill tape. I can help you out with that. Oh, well. have the archives going back about 10, 15 years. Okay, so... Just in general, there's something that's called the shade technique. Okay, the shade technique is something that really has to do with corners that have to play against cut receivers. Okay, so what is a cut receiver? Well, that's a receiver that's aligned tight to the formation, about three to four yards probably from the offensive tackle. It's a huge thing that happens in the NFL. Basically, what happens at a lot of levels, okay? It's no different than if this was a spread set this was just a slot receiver, and there was another receiver out here, right? So you have to, how do you play off coverage versus guys that are aligned tight? You could be a safety, okay? And you have to play against a tight end in a nub, set, right? He's lined up what? Tight. He has so many directions that he can go. He has the whole route tree. So you need some techniques that can help you out to give you the confidence to really play these routes that are, it seems like it's so many. 
And the way we break it down is really based off the release of the routes, okay? So based off the release of the route, you can do really only three things, okay? You can do from this position here, right? You can run a shallow across the field. So he's going to the inside right now. This is kind of similar to when you're playing quarters coverage. You talk about reading one and two, two to one, kind of plays into it. So it's kind of like you're relearning, reinforcing the learning that you already have. You can also just run straight down the field. Ironically, when, when slot receivers or anybody that's tight runs straight at you, most of the time they're going to end up running a corner or a dig, maybe a post. It's pretty much those three routes. So when you see a guy coming off the line of scrimmage running right at you with speed, most likely that's what you're going to get, okay? And then the last one here would be a spray release, okay? Now, depending if you're going against an outside receiver, this is definitely unique to um, outside receiver play. Most of the time, what they're going to do is work up to about 10 to 12 yards and either break out on what we call a spray out or work back on a post, okay? So that's unique to that. If you ever get a slot receiver who's running an outside stem, so it will look more like, let's say, you know, this is a slot receiver. He's running that on a bend route, looking like he's getting to the bottom of the numbers. That's going to be potentially probably a bender or vertical concept. If you ever see that type of route from an inside player, okay? Just want to put that in there because, again, shade does apply to slot receivers as well, right? But what we get here is the good old spray, okay? So we get the spray release. Now, from a corner standpoint, based off those three releases, you have three different footworks, okay? And this one here, the footwork is going to be, first step is going to be flat foot read, all right? See the release. Then when you see him working outside, then you're going to start to work to a shuffle. It's actually going to be one shuffle, two shuffle, back at a 45-degree angle, trying to keep your leverage, trying to give yourself a little bit of cushion but you're not going to end up being that far back. You're going to probably be, if you're starting here at about seven yards, you're probably going to only get to like nine to 10, you know, yards kind of sort of, all right? And the thing about these routes, when they run them, they're going to break at about 10 yards-ish, maybe about nine yards. And that kind of puts stress on the receiver because he sees you patiently working towards the spot where he needs to break, okay? But as soon as he runs that, you see him take that inside, third inside step for the most part. I'll talk about more of that later on. And he works that out route. Now you would be about right here, and you just drive down at a 45-degree angle, eyes on the man, reach for the ball if you can with the inside hand, and just play from there. So the last thing I'll say is that that's probably the most popular route that you would see. Um, you could get the spray seven, right? And if you do get a spray seven, you're going to say, oh, well, you know, you can get beat, you know, because you're outside leverage. Well, this little shuffle technique, that guy's working really fast. Honestly, you're going to be even with him by the time he gets to the top of his route. So then he has to work a route that comes back through your body, you know? And at this time now, when you get to this point, you're going to start to either pedal if, you don't, if you're not sure what's going on, or you're going to open up, right, in some sort of direction, being ready to protect yourself and not get run by deep, okay? So... Just want to talk about the shade technique. It's a really cool thing that you can use. You are a DB. Um, and ironically, at the bottom of the screen, this is kind of similar to, we kind of get a little bit of another version of it versus the tight end. And this tight end is actually going to run a little bit of that route that I told you where he works up at like a little bit of a bendy angle. Usually that when he does that, he's probably going to run a vertical. In this case, he could run an out route off of that, but that's no big deal. But it would be kind of the same idea here with this corner. He actually does a decent job of it naturally. I don't know if he's taught it, but he runs, he shuffles, shuffles, all right? Tries to kind of keep his outside leverage to start. But once he gets to about the numbers, you're not really worried about outside leverage. Let him cross your face and then be ready to either pedal or turn or run, okay? That's what it is. But that's kind of no different than what we just saw on the other side. It's just a slower-footed athlete, so it's going to look a little different. But let me just show you. What's happening here? I'll come back to the top, but just look at the bottom with me. Look at number 20. I'll come back to the top. You see those shuffles he's taking right there? That's kind of exactly what I was talking about. And then if you're unsure, then you pedal like 20's doing, and you just play ball from there. Now, he saw the ball throw, and that's why he's not part of that route. But look at the top. Look how this guy chooses to play it. He just backpedals the whole time, number seven, right? He just sits there and doesn't do it. He just basically pedals like he's playing off coverage on the outside receiver. 
he tries to start slow with his initial footwork, but honestly, it's just not good enough. And in the NFL, that's going to be beaten every single time. Like I'm telling you right now, they don't make the adjustments needed. The New York Giants have already looked at this, and they're going to run this route in the same formation, in the same play, to start the game. I guarantee it, okay? And then they have, obviously, everybody has a double move off of everything. But that's not good enough. And that's where, you know, if you learn the shade technique, you'll be in a lot better shape, okay? Trust me, I've had players come to me afterwards and be like, yo, I had no idea how to play a slot receiver. But once I learned how to play shade, it gives you confidence. It gives you the tools to feel like my body positioning is going to be it's going to be in good position to make a play on the ball. Right? We'll look at another one that I saw later on in the game with the uh, triangle technique. Right? They're going to motion the um, they're going to motion the tight end here across. Apologize. All right, so they're going to motion the tight end across. It comes three by one, right? Now, the backside looks like they're playing quarters coverage, all right? Not 100% sure what they decided to do here with the uh, the bottom. This could be another triangle. I'll come back and look at this in a second. But this little, whatever's happening here, these three guys could be working over these two guys. And anytime you get two guys that are close, this is kind of like a, when two and three are close, usually it could turn into, like I had talked about, a lot of these type of routes, right? These angle routes, used to call that a cam route back in the day, um, follow, whatever you want to call it. So they might be working something out over there. But really, let's focus on the backside. Safety back here makes a little signal to this guy and how they're going to play this cut split X receiver, okay? So nasty, right? If you guys play Madden, you see this pop up. X, you know, just something nasty, X nasty, means that this guy's within five yards of the offensive tackle, right? So what they're going to do is if he runs any type of route over the middle of the field, right, the safety's going to drive on it. If he runs anything outside, corner's going to drive on it. So it's a way to basically um, play that. Some people call it cut, right? And if you watch this from the end zone view, you're going to see, I'll show you later on how the, how the corner, how the safety actually did make a little cut with the cut um, signal. But the one play that does beat this play in general is that route and also just the straight vertical. So a curl route and a vertical route makes that play, makes this defense tough, okay? And I'll talk about that. But you see the little signal, right? 20, 29 there, watch the safety, right? Once he motions over, he's saying cut, cut, cut. So I got you. We're going to work together on the, on the X receiver. We're going to play ball. However, let me go back to the wide shot. The problem with this, again, is, and I've had to go over this with my guys, is what happens when this guy does just run vertical, right? And if both of you guys are sitting back here, right, what happens? Who's going to take them? We, we don't need to waste two players on one guy in quarters coverage. Quarters coverage is really designed to really give that flexibility of, you know, we can play a little bit more, um, what's the word? We can always double team guys. If we need to, if it's a tough route, but in general, if it's an easy route, we should be able to just play with one guy. So you have to choose either your corner is the high player, okay, and the safety is the low player. So if he runs curl, your safety can drive it, kind of like quarters coverage. This is how I would start. Let the corner go over the top, safety come under. Now, I've played plenty of weeks where we've done that, and our corners were like, yo, coach, I'm tired of just playing over the top. It's time for me to go make a play on this curl, so you let them switch it up week to week sometimes, as long as everybody on the same page, and we can now go what? We can go with the corner can drive this, and the safety would just sit back and watch out deep, okay? But you got to have a plan, not just for inside, outside. You got to have a plan for curls and goes, okay? Um, I've seen the times where guys are running straight go, and both guys are sitting low, and the guy runs right through the coverage. So, this whole bracket coverage that you can use, again, this is cover four, but within cover four, there are rules and tools that you can use. A lot of people call it the Fangio system, cover six system. There's different tools that have been used, honestly, for the past 20 years in football. Um, the team that I learned it from originally, again, was the old Ravens school team, the Ravens from back in the 2005 years, you know, and all those guys, Ed Reed and them, they ran this stuff too, okay? Um, so just want to talk about that and, you know, just want to make sure you understand that if you are maybe a coach or you're a player 
you know, you want to show some, you know, you, you want to double team on the backside on the X because it's a really good player. Let's have a plan for it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to cut this film short because it won't be too big, too long. Again, I'm going to open up that Patreon though. Different room called the DB room. Okay. Call it the DB room school. Kind of got it from JT O'Sullivan with his QB school. He always talks about sometimes I'm not, this isn't called the DB school. Maybe we should have a DB school, right? We should talk about defense and what's going on in the defense and i'll be happy to guide those conversations talk with you guys about that in more detail and we can talk about real life football along with my madden channels of course which again always incorporates real life football so but also there might be some people out there that want to just hear about the nfl knowledge and just about real life examples human players doing the thing okay thanks for staying this long if you did appreciate it man like and subscribe join the patreon the links at the bottom I'll talk to you later, man. Peace.